So as you can see, we have just pulled the dog box out of our new F30 build because we are currently going to be waiting on parts for it. Um, we're waiting on body kit stuff for it and whatnot, and we have a competition coming up. So in our last video, you saw us pull back Mona into the shop, and she's right here next to the F30. So we're going to take this dog box and we're going to put it on that sweet 2JZ that Chris spent the weekend building for us. So it's got all nice bits and bobs on it. He'll go over that with you. I also noticed that the intake manifold is a three and a half inch inlet. Did yeah, you notice that? The body also isn't already set up for the V-band, so we're going to see if that other throttle body from the old intake manifold bolts up with that one. Because that one already has the HD clamp set up on it. Okay, never mind. That answers that question. So we got Donnie underneath. Oh, Donnie got out from underneath the car. Donnie is going to be working on doing the subframe stuff for us because we are now putting a winter spec winter dip in the back of this as well as a dog box. Our plan for it was just to make it a fun car, a demo car for, you know, going to like Fuel Fest and all those other ones, Grid Life, whatnot. But now it's going to be competing. So we're going to put a winner's in it, dog box. So we have the subframe somewhere around here. Um, so Donnie's going to take and put that in, put all the control arms and everything on that while me and Chris are mating the motor to the trans and then putting it in the car. And then from there, Chris can start working on wiring for it and I can start working on intercooler piping, downpipe, all that stuff. So it's gonna be all hands on deck for this. Yeah. We have two weeks to put together a race car. And if we didn't have to change anything on it, if it stayed everything how it was supposed to, we would have been able to do that with no stress, no pressure. So now timeline crunch is happening because we have a lot of other stuff for me to do. Some of y'all saw it in one of our other videos. We didn't say anything about it, but somebody saw the Easter egg. So we have a lot of stuff that's on our plate right now. So we're going to rush right to this and get going. So fun news, when you change transmissions, also your transmission hump and everything has to change. So we have to cut this out, even though it's already painted, we'll build a nice cool little cap out of aluminum and then, you know, um, have them paint that part. But we need to make room for our dog box because it wasn't supposed to get one, now it's getting one. So we're gonna make a little bit of room for it. So we have the engine in there, it's on our engine mount, and we're gonna take and cut that out and then put it up into place and then we can start doing fab work. Chris can start doing wiring on this stuff. It's gonna go fast. It's gonna be fast. Two weeks, right? Two weeks. <laughs>
Yo, Cricket, what's this nice new manifold? So, this is the new phase manifold from JP2. No, DP2. I was going to start by saying we needed a new manifold. We're not going with a cast one, and we wanted a tube, tubular manifold. And phase manifolds by DP Tune actually has them. They're in stock. They're available on our website. So they're available for GE and GTE applications. And they have been made to fit the E36 and E46 chassis. You can get them in a V-band or a T4 clamp. Now the cool thing about these is they're set up in firing order. So when one fires, it actually grabs a vacuum from the other cylinder. So there's no lag there. It's constantly pulling air. So it's all done in firing order, equal length. They actually did a lot of testing for this. So it is sick. Can't wait to try it out. And it's beautiful. Very nice welds. Everything's put together really nice. I'm excited. They have it in stock. You don't have to wait. It's crazy. You can actually order it and it'll ship. Available at DriftHQ.com. Turbo smart. Saw these in SEMA and they were awesome. Can't wait. As soon as we saw it, we wanted one on a car. We just didn't know what car we were going to put one on. It's like a giant wastegate box. And then we swapped everything from Mona to a different car and we needed a turbo. So it worked out perfect. It's so funny seeing the size of a box. Yeah, the like, this is the same a... exact thing as their wastegates and their just giant blow off valves. Not that we ever use blow off valves, but we use their wastegates all the time. Ooh. It's like Christmas. It's like Christmas for someone else. The goods. Dang. Look at the turbines in there. There's double turbines. Double like, blades. Double, double stacked. So yeah, we uh, we saw the Turbo Smart lineup when we were at SEMA. We've always used their um, blow-off valves in the past and their wastegates in the past, but this is their new turbo design, which they say they build the turbos pretty much around the engine instead of a horsepower goal. So for turbo response, good spooling efficiency and everything like that. They come in V-band inlets and T4 inlets, so if you want to go twin scroll or anything crazy, but our new fuse manifold has the V-band inlet that lets us kind of clock the turbo the way we want to. So we're going to line it up and we're going to give this thing a test run and see what it does. I already love that. Just locks right in. Oh yeah, that's gonna look so good in there. You know, turbos are about aesthetics as much as they're about performance, and you know, at least to us it is. And that two and a half inch outlet, loving that instead of the little baby two inch that we get. So their hot side turbine, it's a different design than most, and it's a lot smaller too, right? They were explaining it to us at SEMA. They're able to have like. It's more compact turbo and get offer the same amount of yeah, same power. efficiency just through like pressure ratios and you know AR sizing and everything like that. They figured out something, so we're gonna test how efficient they really are. They use that phi ratio is what they now made. you got all that room to swing that downpipe over there too. So Dang. you can put some churching up in the side. That's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. New favorite. New favorite. Yeah. Now I need to find out if they do reverse rotation. Because if they do, got some ideas. I got ideas for myself. Turbo air conditioner. Yep. Yep. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. It's gonna air. Turbo it's gonna your seat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's gonna turbocharge my intake. Right? Yeah. Big fan. I always like when you can spin the turbo if you want to sit straight forward like that, or you want a little outward pitch. I like the outward pitch just for intake routing and stuff. You can't. Yeah, you're gonna have to loosen some things. But yeah. Give her a go-ski. They come with the clampies too? I got so excited seeing it. Actually looking the box. Yep. That cricket. This is one thing you'll really appreciate. Hey. Give you a downpipe flange with it. What is this? No way. Somebody's listening. All right. Every company that uh, that right. makes a turbo, nobody Same offers the flange, the, the flange. You have to go and do the research and find where it is. And they're usually on back order. This is sick. Yeah, and Saves our manifold me one already step. has the fire ring built into it, which is great because it just locks in. Now I got to wire stuff and you get to play with turbo stuff. It's awesome. That's way better than the list that he gave me earlier. <laughs> I 
So I got my pre-cut pies from Vibrant in four inch. So you can get these in anything for stainless and titanium. They don't sell aluminum pie cuts because they want to keep you, you know, they don't want you to be lazy and become dependent. You can make your own aluminum pie cuts. Those are simple to make. These ones take a little bit more time and then you got to deburr them and all sorts of stuff. They already come all set, like laser cut, good to go. Just put them together and weld them, nice and simple. Thanks, Art from Vibrant. You're always hooking me up. Appreciate you. Let me tape them all together first. See if you like it. If you do, mark it, tack it, put it back up there, make sure it fits right, and then go back and finish weld it in that order. I just want this to kind of wrap around this way, and I need it to come down through this section because this is the biggest area. It gets too tight up here, and I don't want it to get too hot and melt any of the paint. So I'm going to have it go through the widest section, which is over here. This will give me plenty of room to keep it away from the frame rail and the firewall so those don't get hot and melt the paint, but also far enough away from the phase um, manifold so where I don't get more heat coming from this into the exhaust. So, And then we also have to make a spot. I got saddle bungs from Vibrant so I can make a nice um, spot for the O2 sensor, which is going to be somewhere right around here too. So there's a lot of stuff that's going to be going on in this little corner. And I want to give myself as much room away from the firewall as possible. Alright, so in this video we're making great progress on the car. We got the engine in, we got all of the intercooler piping done, got the downpipe done, turbo mounted. Chris got a whole bunch of stuff done inside the car, right? Oh yeah. Got yeah, I got uh, pretty much all the brake lines routed as much as we can. We just got our master cylinder in today, which is sweet. We got our hydro line routed, we got our fire suppression lines ran to the front of the car. Most of the chassis harness is laid out at this point. We just have to get a couple connectors, which will be here in the next few days. Uh, we have our arc panel ECU, everything like that is all mounted. Cricket mounted everything into the dashboard as well, which came out sweet. Then we got heel plates in there, which are badass. We got our seat position finally figured out. So now we're going to get some out in the hydro and then we can finish all that up. Then it's going to go on the lift finally because we were tired working on the floor. Yeah. Thanks to Tommy, who is now gone, our sweet boy. And thanks, speaking of working on the floor, Donnie. So, uh, Donnie made room for the bulldog that we just got in there. So he had to do all this by himself while the rest of us were working on other aspects of the car. So he'd go up, oh, not enough. Down, cut, up, down, up, down. Got it to fit perfect. We made a back cap for it as well. And now we're on to putting in the fuel cell, the radiator, and so on. But it is coming together. Oh, and we, oh, yeah. and we, we got mounted the these. Panels on. They kept being sitting on my table and I didn't want to scratch them. I figure if I put them on the car, someone else can scratch them. Yeah. Now we can put the radiator and all that stuff in there. It's going to be an exciting week. Yeah. So let us know what you think. This is a fast build for us. The only thing we changed in this was uh, the transmission and the rear end. Everything else was already ready to get bolted in here. Just a new wiring harness so the S2 chassis harness. But besides that, it's fast. We done next week, right? We also changed, you know, intercooler position and you know all that stuff. So that's all going to take a toll on timelines. But yeah, I mean, 
Hopefully we'll have this thing done by next week. Yeah. I got faith. Two more videos. We'll have this bad girl running. Mona Lisa 5.0. 5.0. Like, subscribe, comment. Send it to your friends. You know? It's a new Jay-Z. Look at it. It's beautiful. And this is brand new. Zero mileage to Jay-Z from Toyota. GTE. You can actually buy them. It's crazy. It's going to be available at DriftHQ.com. Stay tuned. If we don't buy them all.